Shalom. I'm Dr. Billy Brim, and this is our April 14, 2024 uh, Prophecy Watch War in Israel, Melchamaba Israel. And indeed, it is. Surely, if you're on this and you wanted to hear what I had to say about it, then you know what has been happening in Israel. There has been an attack. Now, this is really, really important. That was made from the soil of Iran. From the soil of Iran, and some from their proxy, but mostly from the soil of Iran, there were launched against Israel 100, and now these are rounded off, it's a few more, 170 suicide drones, 120 ballistic missiles, 30 sonic cruise missiles for a total of 330 plus that were fired at Israel. 99% were intercepted. And all the drones and missiles were downed outside of Israel's airspace by the IAF, the Israel Air Force, uh, and their allies. Now, it's be good to be an ally of Israel. And those who are on Israel's side and helping were the United States of America, thank God, United Kingdom, Jordan, France, and others. Now, there was a net, and you're going to hear at the end of it, at the end of this program, we're going to, uh, we heard from Guy Leibowitz, have a video from him that was sent today from Israel. And uh, there's a net that they hit, that they ran into of defense. I think it's four layers that's over Israel. Bless the Lord. Even the Ukraine and Russia have never fired this many simultaneously at each other. Uh, Iran, Iraq, Russia, they know, they're watching, and they saw what happened with Israel. Um, I want to read to you. We have a prayer call every Wednesday. And at that Wednesday call, this is something quite supernatural that the Lord has called us to do. And in prayer and tongues and interpretation, this last Wednesday, the Lord said to us, I write it like this. He will give us a statement, which I write in blue ink. And then he gives us a scripture. We look the scripture, it backs it right up. Maybe you can see there where he said, trust me and through this storm, I am faithful. And then he said to us, Israel will stand. I am. I am, that's his name, yod The God who is, who was, and who is to come. You'll see there at the top of page two, Israel will stand. I am. Don't you know that I am the shield? of Israel. And then he just said Psalm 115 9 through tongues and interpretation. We look it up and there we find that it says, O Israel, trust in Jehovah. He is their help and their shield. He's the shield. Now these wonderful lines of defense that they had, which God, and you're gonna hear, you're gonna hear him say it. You're gonna hear Guy say it. God gave them the know-how to set that thing up. Yes, all of that was there. But God is the Magen. You've heard of the Magen David? Magen means shield. And the Magen David, of course, is that that sign that they have. Um, An amazing, an amazing thing, an amazing attack. Now, I'm going to show you something that Amir... Sfarty posted. He's on Telegram and it's spelled A M I R T S A R Sfar F A R T I T S A R F A R T I Sfarty Amir Sfarty. He has really amazing uh, connections. And he quoted, he posted this video, which I have watched over and over. Now, what is it going to be of? It's going to be of Jerusalem, but not just Jerusalem, the Knesset, their top government building. 
And you're going to see that coming with kind of a blue light around it, blue white light around it. And you're going to see that they were literally aiming for the Knesset. They were aiming for the Knesset. They were aiming for, let's say, for us, it would be they were aiming for Capitol Hill. They were aiming for Parliament. They were aiming for the Senate, the House. They were aiming for the White House. Kind of like they did, you know, when we had the Twin Towers thing. So they were aiming for Israel's top places. They did not succeed. Now, this video that I'm going to show you, uh, it, it just astounded me. I can hear them. They're going to be counting. Let's see if you can learn a little bit so that you can hear them count. You're going to hear them say, Hat, that's one. Stein. Then you're going to hear somewhere they're going to say, Arba, that's four. Hamish, five. Shesh, Sheva. You're going to hear them counting. They are watching as these uh, projectiles are coming and Israel is taking them down. They actually get tickled. Who would be tickled? I told Shelly, who would be tickled if we were somewhere and we were watching projectiles coming toward Washington, D.C., and we were laughing? What is thrilling to them is God is their shield. God is their shield and their shield. These layers of defense that God showed them how to do are working. So let's watch that video now, Onesimus, please. ב-זוי. Amazing. I hope you saw it. I hope you saw the Knesset. I hope you saw and 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 actually they were thrilled. Now, what will happen next? Israel will respond. If you were a betting person and they took odds on it, you could bet one hundred percent. Israel will respond. The war cabinet convened uh, today for four hours. And you can be sure they came up with some plans. Now, they have an opportunity, a perfect opportunity to hit Iran. Because from Iranian soil, soil not through one of their proxies, not through uh, Hamas in Gaza or Hezbollah in Lebanon, but from Iran, they fired on Israel. Now, this gives legitimacy to Israel to fire back on Iran. They have a perfect opportunity to fire on the nuclear facilities, other uh, military facilities that they've been needing to take out. But you know how it is with world pressure and all of this and that. I look, I think they should. Most people are saying that they should. I don't know about our administration, but most people who know are saying they should. This is the opportunity for them to do it. Now, there is absolutely nothing in the Bible, nothing, not one thing, that even hints that Israel will be hit by the devastation of a nuclear attack. 
from Iran. I've always known that. They're not going to hit Israel with a nuclear attack. What is so dangerous, though, for our country is to facilitate them like we've done with the nuclear arms agreement and da 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 all the things that happened in the Obama administration and then that went on and then one now. We should not facilitate any plans that they would make even to do such a thing. It's dangerous for us. We've got to have an administration that is pro-Israel, period. Shelly and I are going tomorrow uh, to uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, with uh, John and uh, Diana Hagee, and they're taking 250 delegates. And uh, we're going to go visit the House and some Republican um, some Republicans who there's a bill coming up, a supplemental aid bill for Israel that we would aid them. And uh, some of them have been kind of riding the fence on it. Uh, I told Shelly, well, we're going to go up and we're going to visit with them. We're going to go right to their offices. But after what happened this weekend, surely they're not straddling the fence anymore. But we'll give you a report on that later. So anyway, we're going for that. Um, no, Israel will never be wiped out. Now, uh, the war, Ezekiel 38 and 39 war. Is this the Ezekiel 38 and 39 war? Yes. Is it in its fullness? No, not yet. But who knows what might happen before the week's out. This is, all the players are there. We'll name some of the main ones. Russia, we watched them be entrenched uh, just last week. We saw more and more entrenchment of their troops right on the border, especially Syrian border. They say they're there for peaceful purposes, that they're there to kind of watch over peace between. They're not, but that's what they say. But they're there. And they came out then yesterday. I saw one thing that they came out and said they support Iran if anybody tries to hit them. So there's Russia. They're the number one. Number two in the Bible, Ezekiel 38 and 39, of this allied group that's going to come down against Israel is Persia, which is modern-day Iran. Turkey is one of the ones, Libya and others. So they're in place. They're all over there. They're all in the Middle East. They're all threatening. So it started. Now, these things just don't happen overnight like you step over a log. Uh, They build. So it's building. The war. The Ezekiel 38-39 war is building. Will it have a short uh, preamble, preface, uh, or will it be longer? I'm sure to God it will be short because he sees the time differently than we do. But to us, it might seem long. I don't know. It could be like this very week. We'll see things come to an apex. Now, it's not going to last long. That Ezekiel 38 and 39 war is not going to last long. I'm thinking about, let's see what happens this week. And I'm thinking about maybe I'll come on and do a prophecy watch where we just look at the scriptures about the Ezekiel 38 and 39 war. Uh, Right now, let's just look at a very few of those scriptures. One thing people ask me is, is the Ezekiel 38 and 39 war before the rapture? It could be. It could not be. You know, we don't know for sure, for sure. But what makes me think that it is, is Ezekiel 39. Now, something so delicious to look at are the scriptures. Get out your own Bible. And I'll give you the scripture references. The print's a little small on this. Uh, Ezekiel 38, verse 16. Write these down. Because these are the scriptures where God says why he's doing the war. He's doing the war so that nations will know that Jehovah's God. And you might add a little P.S. and not Allah. Jehovah is God. And He's this war's coming so that he can, the nations, he loves the nations. He wants the nations to know that he's God. So just read yourself, Ezekiel 38, 16, Ezekiel 38, 23, Ezekiel 38, 7, uh, excuse me, no, that's Ezekiel 39, Ezekiel 39, 7, 
Ezekiel 39, 21 and 22. And um, Ezekiel 39, 28 and 29. Those are all scriptures that says he's doing this so that the world will know. Now, when the actual war comes at its apex, it's short. And when I teach on that, um, on an upcoming thing, uh, we'll show you, but it's going to take some time. I mean, that's going to take a, probably about an hour. And we'll show you what shows us it's short. Now, one of the things that's a lead into all this is Damascus. Well, all kinds of things are happening at Damascus. Now, I want to show you why I think it could be before the rapture. In Ezekiel 39, the war has happened. And God is, is talking about what will happen immediately after the war, which he has won himself with hailstones and supernatural ways. So uh, Ezekiel 39, verse 9. This is after the war. And they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth and shall set on fire and burn the weapons. Both the shields and the bucklers, the bows and the arrows, the hand staves and the spears. So that's what that's what Ezekiel could see and what he knew. But there, there, there's fallout. We were in um, Ashdod. And there came uh, just on a recent trip there uh, that we went in December with a Hamas firing. And uh, so we were told we heard a siren. And that meant take cover. We were all on the bus, so that just meant put your heads down. Well, uh, the the Iron Dome got the missile, but there was fallout. And some of the fallout fell on a car. And we saw that car was smashed. So whatever is the fallout, uh, Israel's going to clean it up. The fallout, and they're going to burn them for seven years. Now, this is a seven-year period. Time is divided into Shemitah cycles, seven years. When the rapture of the church comes, that will be at the beginning of a seven-year cycle. And on the earth, there will be what is the time of uh, trouble, tribulation, time of the Antichrist. I once, I was thinking about it today when I'm preparing for this. I thought about a rabbi who had his, heads, uh, headed, oh, this is many years ago, a yeshiva near Hebron. And uh, at that time, it was in a Kiryat Arba. And I went there and he's I, I wanted them to know because I had just come from the European Union, which I believe is the old uh, Roman Empire revived. And I said, I wanted him to know there's an Antichrist coming. And I said, did you know there's an evil one coming? And I think he will come from Europe. He said, we know. He said, we are told, I think the Talmud, but I can't remember exactly where he told me. He said, we are told one is coming who is more evil than Haman. And you know Haman, he wanted to wipe out all the Jews. So this evil one is coming right after we're gone. And he will really make himself known in the midst of those seven years. So it looks to me like I doubt, I kind of doubt he's going to let them go around cleaning up. And then, and it says in verse 10, uh, at the end, they shall spoil those that spoil them and rob those that robbed them, saith the Lord God. It says that these people in Ezekiel 8 and 38 and 39 are going to come down to spoil Israel. But this says Israel is going to spoil them during a seven-year period. Well, that sounds to me like it's kind of a normal seven-year period and not what we would call the Great Tribulation. Also, uh, they're going to be cleaning it up. Uh, it is, we just got back, well, just got back. We're going back. We're headed back to Israel right now. I'm headed just in a few weeks here. Um, we went to Be'eri, one of the one of the kibbutzim that was overrun by the animalistic people. and You saw what they did. And uh, so they killed a lot of people. They killed a lot of young people right there on site at that uh, rave. And, they, and, and we saw the pictures of the young people's bodies all around. We saw houses blown up. 
we saw bodies burned. Well, Israel can't leave the land like that. They have to clean it. And there's a group called Zaka, Z-A-K-A. And they have the job of cleaning the land. And those men who are doing that are undergoing psychological, they're seeing things that nobody could imagine ever seeing. Zaka, Z-A-K-A. But the land has to be cleaned. It's a holy land. So now we're looking at Ezekiel 39, 12. And seven months shall the house of Israel be burying of them that they may cleanse the land. Yea, verse 13, all the people of the land shall bury them. And it shall be to them a renown the day that I shall be glorified, saith the Lord God. Verse 14. And they shall sever out men of continual employment. That's like the Zaka now. Passing through the land to bury with the passengers. I'm thinking, I'm wondering if that's tourists. I wonder if tourism has been started again. To bury with the passengers those that remain upon the face of the earth to cleanse it. After, uh, after the end of seven months shall they search. Now, I didn't tell them to get verse 15, I don't think, but I'm going to read it. And the passengers, that could be the tourists, and the passengers that pass through the land, when any sees a man's bones, then they shall set up a sign by it, till the barriers have buried it in the valley of Hemingog. To me, it's like, okay, the tourists are back. And if they happen to see a bone, a man's bone, then they have to advise those whose job it is to, 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 to cleanse the land. So there's going to be a cleansing of the land. There's going to be a uh, cleansing and a usage even of uh, the fallout of the weapons. And that takes seven years. So this is a clue to me that it might, it just might, it possibly could be um, before the rapture of the church. But might not be. You know, we see through a glass darkly. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Now, I'm going to uh, show you, uh, we're going to close with this. Uh, we're taking a tour to Israel. We, it's important, important to stand with Israel. At first, we plan to take two buses, but in four time, a little bit challenging to get two buses to go. So right now we are at, I think we have 10 seats left on a bus. So we could take 10 more people if 10 more people are uh, want to go. We don't want anybody to go, forced to go. Well, it, you'd have to have kind of a call to go. So uh, it's showing through there at the bottom of the screen that you can contact us, Israel Tours at prayermountain.org, and Ruby Martin will help you. It's kind of uh, late to get on, and the prices are a little bit steep. But uh, if you feel to go and God tells you, well, then we've got about 10 seats left. Uh, I want you to hear from Guy now. Guy sent me this video this morning. This is right fresh from today. Guy Leibowitz is our tour guide. He will be taking us to the places uh, where uh, some of the, the same kibbutzim we visited before and some new ones. And uh, we're going to see what's going on. Uh, it, it'll be a wonderful tour. And the main thing about it is it will say to Israel, here are Christians from America who stand with you and who stand for you. Now, this is Guy Leibowitz, and he's going to be talking to me, and he'll mention the tour in there. Bless the Lord. Shalom, Dr. Billy Bream from Israel. Yesterday, an unprecedented event took place in the world. I think that God exposed his power against our enemies yesterday. Uh, you see, God gave the nation of Israel the wisdom to build three systems of defense plus another system and uh, making it four all together. Uh, the Iranians attacked us with 
110 ballistic missiles, 185 drones, and 32 um, sonic cruise missiles. Um, unfortunately for them, and almost nothing penetrated this net of defense. Uh, just for you guys to understand, um, even in, in Ukraine, the Russians never used so many missiles or drones at once to attack um, the, their enemies, and that's Ukraine. And over here, this enormous number. Now, additional to this number, there is also 71 drones and three missiles that intercepted by American troops. So I'm talking about hundreds of hundreds of um, um, kind of uh, threats against the state of Israel. And now Iran, Iraq, Russia, other countries in the world know that there is no way to penetrate our dome our godly dome uh, which defending this country uh, obviously god uses people but that's what happened you guys thank you so much for your support thank you so much for your prayers don't be afraid they they're trying to um, intimidate you and i will see you all in israel in the beginning of june um, traveling through this amazing land. Look how beautiful it is. We're getting ready to harvest the, the wheat and the barley and the almonds are down there. This is Tel Aviv in the background and on the other side, uh, Gaza very far away from here. Look how beautiful it is. And thank you so much again for your prayers and support. I'm looking forward to see you in Israel soon. God bless you all and God bless Israel. Shalom. Isn't that wonderful? You see how they're really upbeat right now, and uh, it, it, it will it will infuse more into them when we go and when we stand with them. And everywhere we go, they'll hug you and they'll say, "You came," and we say, "Yes, we came on purpose." Uh, bless the Lord. So I want to thank you uh, for being with us today in this prophecy watch, and we will be having some more. You might want to look into joining us on our Wednesday noon prayer. Shalom, shalom. Have the rest of a blessed day. And you might tell some people to watch this as it's replayed, especially as they kind of wondering what's going on. Thank God we have inside information inside the Bible. Shalom, shalom. Lehitraot. See you next time.